Howdy guys, Cindy Pixel here. And in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to continue our Python learning for Houdini. And um, specifically in this video, what I want to do is show you guys how to export to uh, a text file. All right, using one of the buttons on your HDA. So if you make a button or make it a, an HDA here, you have the ability to read out all of the parameters, all the data inside of all these parameters, and you can actually you know, export this out to a file. So if I hit this export params, um, button and open the text file that it generates, it gives me all the values. So I get 1.14, 1 and 1, 1. Let's look at that again. There you go. So I get all the values from it. Uh, if I were to, let's actually close that. And uh, let's put in something like 10 and 2 and 4. There we go. And let's uh, export the parameters again and we'll go find that file, which I'm just writing out to the desktop. You can write it anywhere. And we'll take a look at our text settings, and there you go. Look at that. So we're actually writing data out to the to this text file. So that's what we're going to do throughout this video. So let's get started. Okay, so let's get started with creating our um, HDA that actually exports out all of their parameter settings and whatnot. So I actually have a HDA that I've made already, and I actually want to expose a couple more parameters. So let's go to the type properties here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go dive inside. Let's get go into allow editing, editing of contents. And let's go and also promote the size here. So we're going to basically export these particular values um, to a text file. And this is useful um, in this case because we have one that's just a float and then we have one that is also a vector, right? Meaning it has three floats that define its um, x, y, and z values. Okay? So we're just going to take a look at how we um, get access to all that data inside of Python. All right, so let's go and um, get the process started. Um, so what we need to do is we need to create a button. So I'm going to drag and drop a button over here, and I'm just going to call this um, export. And for the label, we'll say export uh, params for parameters. All right, these are all of our parameters up here. And in that particular button, what we want to do is we want to make sure this is set to Python, not HScript, all right, because we're going to be calling some Python from within this particular HDA. And that Python needs to go into this uh, scripts area right here, all right? And so what we need to do is we need to add a new Python module to this. So we come down to this event handler down here, and we go and select the Python module, and that will create our Python module for us. All right, so to get this started, what we should do is we should define a function. So we're going to put def and we're going to call this export uh, params like so, and then put a colon at the end. Now, what we need to do is we need to get access to this particular instance of this HDA. All right. So this particular instance that's been created here inside of the OBJ area. And to do that, we're going to pass in what is called the quarks like so, and we need a G in there. Now this is a special local uh, dictionary uh, variable that is created for us by uh, Houdini. And it passes us a bunch of information about this particular instance of this HDA. All right, so it'll make more sense once we start to use it. All right, so let's go back to our parameters over here. And in the callback script for our button, what we want to do is we want to say uh, who.pwd, like so. And then we can do, um, you could do HDA module, like so. Or you could just do um, HM, like that. All right, so that stands for Houdini module. And then what we need to do is we need to reference this particular function, or we need to call it, I should say. All right, so we're going to say dot export params, and then we're going to pass in quarks. Remember that quarks is created for us uh, by Houdini. All right, it automatically populates, and it's a, p a Python dictionary. All right, so uh, just to make sure that everything is working, uh, let's go back to our uh, function that we're creating here, and let's just do a print statement just to make sure our button is hooked up to our function. All right, so we'll say um, exporting uh, parameters, like so. Hit apply, and to view this, let's just kind of put this guy over here. I already have my Python shell open, but if you don't, you can just go to um, hit this guy right here, and you can do Python shell like that. All right, so now when I hit this uh, button up here in my parameter view for my HDA, uh, we get exporting parameters. So that means we've hooked up our function to this particular button using this particular code right here. All right, cool. So now that we have all of that information, we don't need this particular print statement anymore. 
Uh, the things that we do need, though, for all of this is we need to get access to this particular instance. And to do that, I'm going to declare a new variable called param or parent, like so. And this is going to be equal to uh, quarks. And then we need our brackets, because remember, this is a dictionary, and so it has key value pairs. And in this case, what we want to do is we want to get the node value. And so we're going to use the key node. And that returns this particular node, this instance of this HDA right here. So now we've got that stored in there. What we need to do is we need to go and get um, our parameters. All right, we need to get their uh, values up here. All right, so let's do that. So let's actually go and give ourselves some comments. I'm going to say uh, get parent node like so. And then we're going to um, get parms like that. There we go. And the first one we want to do is uniform scale. So let's store that. I'm going to call this uniform scale is equal to our parent dot parm. All right. So this is basically how we access the parameters over here. All right. We access them by their internal name. All right. And that internal name is the scale to in this particular case. I didn't name it anything special. This is just the name that was generated when I promoted the parameter from the, the box node inside of this box maker HDA. All right. And so this is how we get the, that particular parameter. We need to reference it by its internal name up here. So I'm going to go back to scripts and we're going to say parent.parm and we want to get that particular value. All right. So this by itself, what this does, um, if you actually look at the documentation uh, for all this here, well, let's actually um, go up to the help here by hitting that little question mark up there. And if we do, uh, we want to look for Python. And we should do Python. We'll do Parm. See if it takes us there really quickly. And that's actually just taking me to the Python geometry node. So uh, let's go up to browser. And I'm going to look for Houdini, uh, Python, and who. That's the main module. So the Python who module. And what we want to do, once you go there, is just type in Parm up here. And there you go. So who.parm. So it's a parameter in a node. This allows us to access those uh, particular parameters that exist on a node. All right, so let's go back to Houdini over here. And uh, let's see what this does. So this gets us the parameter, right? Um, and it returns a parameter. It doesn't actually return the value itself. We actually need to utilize the eval. All right, so I'm going to do uh, eval like that. And that actually gets us the actual value, not just the parameter. All right, so let's uh, print it just to make sure. So I'm going to do uh, print, and we're going to do this uniform scale, like so. I'm going to hit apply. And then let's go hit our button. And look at that, we get 1.0, because our uniform scale is 1. If I were to change this and hit the button again, I get 3.17. Pretty cool. All right, so now we need to go and uh, get the uh, size up here. All right, so let's uh, store that. So we're going to say size is equal to parent.parm. And we want to get the size uh, parm over here. All right. And so I'm going to come back over here, and we're going to say size. And we'll do eval. All right, and we'll print that. So we'll say print uh, size. Now, this isn't going to actually work because it's a vector 3, right? So if you actually look at the parameters here and go to the parameter here, uh, we have a float vector three. We have to handle these differently, but I just wanted to show what the error message will show. So if I hit export parms, it'll say none type object has no attribute eval. And that's just because um, this float vector three parm, it, it can't, it doesn't know how to return a vector three basically, right? Um, the clue that you have is if you go to channels, um, you can see that it's looking at size X, All right? So that's just the way the mapping is work, working. So Let's change this over to uh, size X and size X and size X for there. Hit apply. There we go. So if I were to change this, you can see we're getting 3.3. Beautiful. Awesome. So we just need to copy this line right here and paste it a couple more times. We'll do size Y and size Z. It would be cool if they actually had some way to just do this in one line. Uh, maybe they do. I just don't know about it. 
But that's how we do all that right there. So now we have all of our information um, that we need to now basically save into some sort of file. Now I'm just going to be writing to a text file. Okay. So uh, what we need to do is we need to put a new comment. We're going to say write to a text file. And uh, we need to collect all the lines up together. All right. And so I'm going to create a new array. So I'm going to say lines is equal to some empty array like so. Okay. And now what I want to do is I want to um, put all of these particular values in here. So I'm going to say uniform scale like so. And then we're going to do size X like this. And I'm just going to actually hit enter, put in another comma there. We'll do size Y like so. And then we'll do size Z. So we need another comma and there we go. All right, we hit apply. Well, what we need to do, because we're writing this to a text file, these all actually need to be converted into a string. All right. And so to do that, we use the uh, str. That's how we convert to a string inside of Python. All right, so we just need to surround these um, parameter calls here to a string, or we just need to use the string to convert the um, float value to a string. All right, so let's do that. And then we'll do this down here for this guy. Very cool. All right, hit apply. So now all of these guys are converted to over to strings instead of floats. That's one of the cool things about Python is you can do um, all those dynamic castings without, you know, really having to do a lot of work. All right. So all we need to do now is uh, actually write this to some sort of file. All right. So to do that, uh, most common way inside of Python is just to uh, declare a new variable called F for file, right? And we say open and uh, we want to give it some sort of path. So in here is going to be some sort of path. We haven't done that part yet. And then uh, we want to do, we want to write to it. So we do uh, two quotes, single quotes, and then W for write. You can also do read or WR, um, both work. So write will um, automatically write all the uh, lines to that particular file. And if there's no file that actually exists, it'll also automatically create the file for us, which is awesome. All right. So then the next step would be to do uh, f dot write lines like so. And the lines that we want to write are these lines right here. And then we just want to do f dot close. Simple as that. All right. And that just closes the file. So we basically open a new file, write all the lines, and then we close it. Call it a day, basically. So let's hit apply. And all that looks pretty good, except we haven't actually declared any sort of path, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to write this to the desktop, right? And so I want to get some sort of path to my desktop really quick without having to type it in manually. So I'm just going to do desktop and let's actually go inside here and just so I can get the actual path here. Yeah. It's so like that. And let's create a new variable called path. And inside of quotes, sorry about that, equals that. And we want to do forward slashes for these guys. Now you could do a lot of dynamic uh, pathing and stuff like that, but I'm just showing you guys the, the general basics. All right. And so I'm going to say um, HDA settings dot TXT. That's important to include the format. All right, cool. So let's hit apply. And with that, Let's go and export our params. All right, so then let's go to our desktop. All right, so let's hide that guy or minimize it. And then here's my file. So HDA settings.txt. And look at that, we have all of our data written out. Now, <laughs> this is actually a formatting issue. You can see all the values are all in line with each other. That's not what we want. So let's cover that really quick before we close out this particular uh, video. Uh, and it's real easy. All we need to do is just, um, concatenate on a new line. All right. To do that, we just do plus uh, two single quotes like so. And uh, we need a forward slash and an N that stands for new line. So we can just copy that and put this at the end of each one of those lines there. Let's actually just get rid of that extra space there. Cool. All right. So I'm going to hit apply and accept because we are done and I'm going to hit export params. Go check out my file again. Oh, look at that. There we go. Pretty cool stuff. 
All right, so hopefully that helps. Um, you could do this with lots of different uh, types of um, file formats. Uh, one of the more common ones is to do text. Uh, you could use JSON. Uh, you could write your own um, file format if you wanted to. Um, this also, I should note, works inside of the Houdini engine as well. So you can export stuff out from the Houdini engine if you need data from um, whatever scenes you're working with. So really powerful stuff. So hope you guys like it. Thanks so much.